The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. You're watching Element 14, I'm Andy Clark, and today we're gonna to build a keyboard critic. Amazing hacks, inspired designs, each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So, the plan for the build is there'll be a USB keyboard that will plug in turn to the FTDI USB host. The host will then transmit over the serial the uh, raw keyboard data. That will um, be processed by the Arduino, which will give us a smiley face or a frowny face then pass on the data across to the host computer uh, by acting as a USB key keyboard itself. The parts for this project are an Arduino MKR0, 32-bit core on that one, a V2 DIP148 USB host module from FTDI, along with a VNC2 debug module, a mini USB cable, a beefy servo, and the kit, and of course a set of jumbo sized googly eyes. FTDI did provide some sample firmware for the module, but I couldn't get that to communicate. So I loaded up the IDE, and to check that uh, everything was working, I built a simple blink example. What I discovered whilst building the Blink example was that the default uh, I.O. multiplexer settings didn't connect to the correct pins. So I checked the data sheet and remapped the pins as appropriate to make a working example using the serial communication. Once we've got some working code, we can build it. It's a fairly standard build process. Um, it uh, compiles each of the files and then links them together to generate a uh, binary file to upload. We can then switch across to the debug tab, check we've got a, a valid debug module plugged in, and then flash it up to the FTDI module. So that I could see the data coming out of the USB host, I created an Arduino sketch that took the data from one serial port and echoed it out onto the serial monitor. The first thing that the USB host does is to check if there's any devices connected to the socket. So it's called the enumeration process. And in our case, it finds a keyboard. And as I press the letter A, we'll see an event. I'm releasing it, another event, pressing down shift, and then A, releasing A, releasing shift, and then pressing multiple letters A, B, C, and then releasing A, releasing B, and releasing C. Want to build the project in this episode? Want to download the code? Find the parts list? Want to ask a specific question and know this host will answer it? Simply take out your phone and point your camera at this QR code. This will take you right to all the details you need to get started. We'll see you on the Element 14 community. So I wrote this little test rig to uh, check how much current the big server was using as I found the Arduino uh, Uno wasn't uh, capable of uh, providing uh, enough power to 
to drive the servo. Um, and what we can see here is it's sort of jumping around between uh, 80 milliamps and um, 100 milliamps. Um, but what I also did see is when it first turns on, there is a current, a, a big spike, and it goes up to sort of like um, six, seven hundred milliamps. Um, and I've also seen when I've loaded this that uh, uh, the milliamps are much higher. Um, so, quick explanation of the test rig here. So, the Arduino Uno is powered from a USB connector. The bench power supply shares a common ground with the Arduino Uno, and then the servo is powered from the uh, from the bench power supply, so we can um, control and, and, and monitor the current there. To determine whether we are writing a happy comment or an unhappy comment, the idea was to use a machine learning platform called TensorFlow. Um, that's got a light version that fits onto microcontrollers, um, and the idea is that um, it can live within the CPU and memory constraints of those devices. We can build the TensorFlow model using a notebook which runs using Google Colab. It combines text and uh, code, and so far we've uh, done the install and loaded the data, and we're gonna create now some training data so we can run this cell. That splits our test and training data, sort of an 80-20 split there. We can see what shape our data is. That's quite very important when we're putting the data into the model is to know the, know the shape of it. So that tallies with that eight there. We build the model. Oh, I've got a typo. Create a typo. Build the model. Compile the model. And once we've built and compiled the model, we can train it with our test data and training data. So we'll just run that as a small set of data so it uh, changed pretty quickly. Um, let's run it for five iterations. There we go, five iterations. And then we can validate it. And we'll just save it. So that's saved it out to disk. We'll see where that is uh, in a bit. Finally, we'll test the model using some test data. These are the values I was expecting to see. And then we can install uh, a bit of software called Tiny ML Gen. So let's run, yeah, let's run. Um, and then we can generate some C code, which we can then save out to disk and we can see the files here so here's our c file that is generated so we'll download that model and then we can take that model and we can load it into the arduino ide so we copy our model into the arduino project and we can see it here it's just a bunch of uh, numbers that get loaded into a big array and then that in turn is processed as a TensorFlow light model and we have to specify how many inputs and how many outputs and, and the sort of working area that is used by the model and once we've loaded the model in then we can start predicting results based on the set of data that we put into the model. Uh, hello there. Just about to write a comment on the uh, Element 14 community. Only total new board. Oh, sorry, keyboard critic. Um, have you considered an alternative? Thank you, Keyboard Critic. So, what do you think about having a critic sitting over your shoulder monitoring all your comments on the internet? Perhaps not for everyone. But have you ever used USB or machine learning in a microcontroller design? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching.